Hello, everyone. This is Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, the Disrupt Meister. My hair is crooked. Welcome to the One Bitcoin Show. Today is Valentine's Day, actually. I didn't realize it was February 14th, 2024 until like the middle of the day. And by the way, my lucky day is February 15th. I've had uh, some very good things happening in the day in the past. Strong hand, long-term thinking. Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin. One day closer to an all-time high. Bitcoin always returns to its all-time high. Perseverance. Hello, my elite friends. I was inspired to make this random show at a random time here in Salt Lake City because of a tweet I read just a classic, you know, you could get excited about Bitcoin. I've seen this like tweet uh, in a million different ways, but I want to remind you that Bitcoin just hit uh, $52,000. So I think uh, it's like surging right now. It's hilarious. Um, so 19 Bitcoin, if you own 19 Bitcoin, you're a millionaire now. So uh, congratulations to, to all of you uh, 19 Bitcoin holders, or if you own 190 or whatever it may be. Um, but I do want to thank uh, Nami Nam, uh, Robert Hardbeck, uh, uh, FF2K, Angry Patriot, we they're uh, paying for the show, basically. And if you want another show soon, um, well, they, they're paying for the last few shows. I did a few extra shows. Um, you know, do a super chat. Send, uh, you know, send me some uh, fi- uh, dirty fiat over, uh, what was it, PayPal, whatever. Or you can send me uh, Bitcoin, too, or whatever. But I don't want you giving up your Bitcoin for me. Okay, so here's, here's the deal. It's linked to below the tweet that uh, made me, uh, inspired me to do this video. And also, it's so funny, I have written down in my notes, fanatics are the most prominent, not the most prevalent. Remember that for any um, association you have, whether it be, uh, you know, baseball fans or uh, Bitcoin fans, uh, religious uh, people, you see the fanatics out there. I mean, they are the most prominent. Um, but they're not the most numerous and not the most prevalent. But what we have in the uh, on, on Twitter, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Twitter, you're going to notice the most prominent people. OK. And for engagement reasons, for attention reasons, I mean, whatever. You, people can have their reasons to do this stuff. They say the most ridiculous things sometimes. Now, this one guy, I, I don't know much about the guy. I've seen him tweet before. I, again, I just, you know, I retweeted it like an hour ago with my commentary. He said, you know, he doesn't know, you know, the world isn't ready for uh, in, in less than a year for uh, Bitcoin's uh, market capitalization to 20x. So what does that mean? He doesn't exactly say it, but I mean, some people just straight up say it. They say uh, because for, for Bitcoin 20x is its market cap. Its market cap is a trillion dollars. We always return to the trillion dollar market cap. We used to say one day closer to a trillion dollar market cap. Now we're again above it. Of course, we're going to get above it again. And and goals is seven trillion. That's a nice next goal. But really, the next nice goal is just to get the six digit freaking re- to get back to the all time high. Okay, get back to sixty nine. All right, and then you get to your six digit realm. But a million million dollars is guaranteed clickbait engagement. You know. So when you say you're twenty xing from fifty thousand. That's a million dollar Bitcoin. That's what a $20 trillion market cap is, is, is a million dollar Bitcoin. Okay. And I, I mean, we've been hearing about this million dollar Bitcoin legend for quite some time. Dude, and he says in less than a year, he, so February the 13th, 2025, he corrected me. He said uh, by, by January 1st of 2025. So, it's just, it's cultish. It's like a religion for some people. Dudes, dudes, come to the real world. If someone buys Bitcoin today and they double their money in, in, in uh, by November the 10th of, 20, uh, of 2025, in one and a half, a little over one and a half years, in uh, one, one and three quarters years, they're doing darn well. That's a hundred percent return. Okay. And yet, by the way, I, what learn the two... What what you should do instead of do not plan your life around million dollar Bitcoin soon. Do not do that. Do not do that. People have been making these clickbait predictions for a very long time. And it's 
hey, maybe it'll come true one day. I'm not totally convinced it'll happen in the next 20 years. I'm not. Okay? But, dude, if it gets to $100,000, it gets to $250,000, I mean, and you just and you buy it now, that's darn, these, these are incredible returns. Incredible returns compared to most investments, buying government bonds, doing all this other nonsense in one year. And when you start to, to put out million dollar Bitcoin and they don't get million dollar Bitcoin, then what do they do? Well, they, they get the, uh, they start buying the cheap altcoins. What's it called? The uh, numerical buy. What's the, the Jimmy song term? I forgot what the, what it is when you see a small number and you think you get, can get it go up quicker or whatever. It's, it's, it's a ridiculous bias that, that certain people have. And um, no, it, it's, and you know, people are like, no, oh, no, my coin is a, it, it can really thousand X. Bitcoin can never thousand X. And by the way, if their coins thousand X, some of these coins they think can thousand X when Bitcoin can't thousand X, is a Bitcoin thousand X is pretty darn ridiculous. I mean, uh, but, but I mean, you, you never know, but uh, uh, their coins, some of these coins, when they thousand X, 10 thousand X, their predictions, they be, their market cash would be a quadrillion dollars. It'd be worth more than everything on earth. Okay, so, so, I mean, you also have to, <laughs> when you get tempted by ridiculous things, I mean, and, and come, what is a $20 trillion market cap? Is that like, I mean, I'm trying to understand what $20 trillion even is, dudes. All right, the amount of wealth on earth, I think is only half a quadrillion dollars. So, okay, let's get to gold, to the gold first, all right? That's $7 trillion. Maybe it's $9 trillion now. I don't know. I actually don't care. And I... <laughs> Because again, if if you really believe in it, then just just buy it, buy it. All right. If, you, if you're gonna, die, I mean, I think it's quite a reasonable expectation. You see what's going on right now with this ETF stuff. You know, you got Whitney Webb still scaring people about all oh, the, 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 the 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 all these uh, the elite are still trying to take over Bitcoin. Dude, they're really buying Bitcoin for these ETFs. They're really buying it. That is why the price is going up. Normies are finding out that, oh, I can own Bitcoin through my ETF. They buy a Bitcoin ETF. The Bitcoin ETF is forced to actually buy the Bitcoin. They don't have all the Bitcoin. They, they can't meet. They didn't buy it all up beforehand, apparently. they have to, Their demand is so strong from these normies. So if you see some commercial on TV for BlackRock, you should be cheering, cheering. It's marketing for Bitcoin. Normies are finding out. It's, it, they, they can buy it now. Oh, they, they should have bought it before. But now they feel comfortable buying it. And that is what is going on right now. Right now, when you see the price going up, it, it isn't it isn't Adam and, and everybody who's been talking about it for 10 years buying it. But we already bought it when it was $600. Pound that like button. Pound, 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 pound. Because check out my pinned tweet at TechBall. And you'll see why I'm so damn why I'm darn happy. <laughs> oh, my God. So... There was something else I wanted to say about all this uh, uh, craziness. Let me see if there's any qu- ask questions in the chat, people. Ask questions there. We got Benjamin Dichter, who, um, yeah, answer? Are you Benjamin, uh, yeah, I don't know if you answered my tweet yet, my uh, DM that I sent you. Um, that was very nice of you to talk uh, about me. It was very nice. Um, all right, let, let's see what we got here. Uh, <laughs> she is the least credible person on the internet. Uh, uh, it, Whitney Webb, he says, uh, Dictor says that. Uh, well, she, she's one of the least uh, credible people. Well, she's the least credible, one of the least credible people that borders the Bitcoin space, that tries to get into the Bitcoin space. But she can she can just make up anything she wants to. Unit bias. There we go. It's unit bias. Thank you very much. I, I, I drew a blank there. I'm going a million miles per hour. My hair is freaking crooked. It's crooked. Why the heck is it crooked? <laughs> I can't make it straight. I can't make my spike straight. All right. What else do we have? Yeah, 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 yeah. So she had, but no, no, no. But people love her because, um, well, no, men here, desperate men love her because she's a woman and uh, she says doom stuff. And people are in a doom cult. But yes, it's this million dollar thing. It's a cult. It's a cult. Just stop. Stop. Just be reasonable with it. Be reasonable, people. And hey, I, I like to get people excited. I, you know, if you say it once in a while or whatever, but if it's like every darn prediction you make, Hey, it's going to be in less than a year. It's going to be in less than six months. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. No, the 210,000 block theory. That's what I also put on my tweet. It's it's below. It says the tweet. 
Retweet the one that says the tweet or just go to TechBall, T-E-C-H-B-A-L-T. Re- it's not hard. Treat people's Twitter feeds like pages. Do not be an algorithm slave. And, and, and all you do is complain. Oh, the Twitter algorithm is horrible, horrible. Yeah, who cares about these algorithms? Go choose yourself. Go choose what YouTube pages to watch. Okay? I see Benjamin Dichter tweets out something with uh, uh, dad side or whoever's video. I'm, I And I check out Ben's uh, Twitter feed and I go to Gad's page. I check out Gad's YouTube all the time. Anyway. But, and you're on Brooke. I check out your on Brooke. I don't let YouTube tell me what to see next or whatever like that. I don't like let Twitter. But if you treat Twitter pages, Twitter uh, feeds like pages, you actually get to see what everybody's really saying instead of what Twitter thinks you should be saying, which is if you if you go by what Twitter thinks you should be saying, then you have no brain. Come on. Just, 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 it is such a great tool for people who have brains, who aren't trees, who just, because, that, that, because most people are just like, oh, they should change the algorithm of this, that, and the other. It's their private company. It's their private algorithm. You want to go beg Elizabeth Warren to make someone change their private property? You freaking loser. It's terrible. When it's, the information is already, you, you, you just have powerful tools already. How much you can learn from these people. Uh, again, if you pick the correct people and you actually use your brain and you actually click what they put out there or read. Does anyone know how to read anymore? Read what they put out there, their blogs and everything like that. Whoa. But yeah, the 210,000 block theory. And this is, this has remained true during this entire time I've been in Bitcoin. And let me explain it again. Pick any day, pick any day and look at the fiat price of Bitcoin and go 210,000 blocks from that day. The fiat price of Bitcoin is more. 210,000 blocks later, which is roughly between 46 and 48 months, four years. Okay? Every, you take whatever today is, Valentine's Day of 2025, you go back, uh, 2024, excuse me, <laughs> you go back to 2020, and I think Bitcoin was only worth about $10,000 or $8,000, but people were starting to pee in their pants because they heard about some disease coming from China, and they were starting to panic and sell. Losers, losers. Ha, <laughs> And everybody knows what happened a month later from today, uh, four years ago, when I bought two Bitcoin for a little bit over $10,000. And now look, they're worth over $100,000. Ha ha ha, you losers who uh, who sold. Oh, it's still, it's going to go down to $3,000. Again, again. So, so I, but again, four years ago, four years ago, it was about $10,000 before people ate that. I mean, there, there was a, I can remember clearly, like a, a look like, oh, we're getting toward the halving. It's going to keep on going higher. And then this news started coming. It started going 8000 Then Scott Adams said, oh, it's $7,000. It's selling all my Bitcoin. And then people, you know, because he's a general. <laughs> well, he's got some interesting takes, Scott Adams. But man, but man, does he value his wealth in women? And does he not learn? Does he not learn why women like him? I mean, he kind of knows that his last woman liked him only because he had money. But then she still divorced him and, and totally ripped him on the internet. It's sad. It's sad. It's sad. I shouldn't make fun. I shouldn't make fun of the guys who get married three times and never learn. I have a relative. I have a relative who, who's on his third wife. Uh, he's older. He's my, my father's age. A blessed memory of my father. A blessed memory. But, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So some guys just have to have a woman. And that, that's like Scott Adams. So everyone's got their weakness out there. I, 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 no, but Scott Adams is wrong with Bitcoin. He's very wrong with women. Uh, there's a few things he's, he's right on. Um, he, he's... Uh, He's good with marketing. He's good with marketing. He's good with marketing. He's got that. I had to stop listening to him in, in 2020 because he just uh, he became so scared of the virus. It was so sad. It's so sad to see an old man lose his woman and be sad, uh, scared about a disease. It, it's sad. It's sad. Um, it's very sad. And, and, and he's not that old, but he looks a little. I mean, he's, anyway, anyway, I, I shouldn't be judgmental with looks. He, he, I, let's judge him by what he says. That the pan, you know, I don't care what he looks like. The panic over the virus. And he's just uh, worshiping of, of really hot young girls and then getting divorced every time. Um, and she wasn't that hot and she wasn't that young and she had kids already. So you should have looked, you should have, I mean, whatever. Uh, I, I, I've, I've gone off on a tangent here with my, uh, a, a little bit here. Let's see what else. Do we have any, any more questions? People send in, uh, yeah, yeah, it's surging right now. The, pr- the price of Bitcoin is surging during, this has happened during other shows. Who gives a darn? Who gives a darn? You, you should already have your stat. You should already have 19 Bitcoin if you've been watching this show. You're already a millionaire. Congratulations. There are people watching this that are millionaires. Great, great. It's awesome. It's, yeah, I know. It is awesome to be a freaking millionaire. You don't have to worry about any. I mean, no, I don't worry about anything. It, it's really weird. Uh, you know, I, you know, when I was y- younger, uh, young, I'd be like, well, how am I going to make my first million so I don't have to worry or whatever? And then when you're, when you're already past that, you're just like, 
I mean, then you see how easy it is to make your second. It, it is true. It is found that like if you're into Bitcoin at least. Whoa, that was pretty awesome back then when that happened. Anyway, 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 anyway. Yeah, second big second million is, is a lot easier than the first million. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Takes a lot less time. A lot less time. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Well, what do we got here? What do we got here? All right, so so again, so so if you want to just be reasonable, just say. To someone who asked, I get asked the question, was it, when's it going to be worth a million dollars? Is it going to be worth a million dollars? And all I say is four years from today, it's going to be worth more. I mean, how many things can you just say that's true for? For four years? I mean, I mean, I say if this is the way it's been going. Now, again, there's another pattern too, a, a pretty rough pattern. <laughs> the, the guy is saying a million dollars by the end of this year. What What does that even – what what – What's that based on? What is that? What he, that's not based on any history. Okay. Because the way it's been working as I, I saw 2013 surge. I saw 2017 surge. I saw what do all these things have in common? 2013, 2017, 2021. And now we're, I'm, I say the next one is going to really be in 2025. When we keep, that's when we keep getting our, our new all time highs in, in those years. And you know, the last time around, it was not as extreme as the other times. Okay, the, the previous all-time high was 20. It only got up to 69. So me saying, well, maybe you should be reasonable and think maybe it, it can only get up to uh, uh, 100,000 or something. I mean, some people are very sad by that. How can you be very sad by, on that, on this day? On this day, Valentine's Day, when it's only worth $52,000, which means you double your money. Now, again, I I hope, I I, I, I mean, again, the, and, and it's always around November that the all-time high happens in those years, 2013, 2017. It was December. I think in 2013 was also December. 20, um, 2021, it was November. So, it, I mean, th- this having thing is real. And people, it's not priced in because the same thing keeps happening. The newbies that come in don't know about this stuff. I mean, they, they, they don't, they're not buying for the having. And eventually they do start buying after the having, they realize the price has been, uh, I mean, the, the supply, new supply has been cut in half. And again, the development on Bitcoin, the excitement around Bitcoin and cryptocurrency follows the same pattern. Let's go back 2018, 2022, 2014. People were so down on cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. No one's working on it. The only people that were working on it became rich as anything. Coinbase was working on it. There have been various, you know, little altcoin projects that did doing things that made lots of money during those off years. So the lesson is this: during the off years, you build your stuff, you build your stash, you build your business. Okay, that's when there's blood in the streets, when people are panicking. You do the opposite of what all the normies are doing. Oh, it's dead. It's, it's going to zero. It's just that and the other. But now, when this and then when things start to get, you know, we get closer to having. Then the first of all, they don't even people don't even realize. When the bear market is over, they're still crying. I, if you go back in my tweets, when they, when Bitcoin got to 32,000, I said, that's it. The bear market is over, but it has doubled the low. It is proven that 15,000, it's not going to go back to 15,500, which it was at in November of 2022. That was the low for this cycle. And then when I knew it was a low, when it doubled and like, and, and that's, it's been proven every time. Okay. It's, we've been through this. Um, we've been through this. How many? I've been through this one, 13, 17, 21. This is the fourth time around. Come on now. It'll be 2025, it'll be the fourth time around. So that guy might have great intentions. And I forgot his name already. He's got more followers than I do on Twitter. Um, and, and I'm sure he's a good guy, a nice guy. He tried to reply and everything like that. Um, but it's it's engagement. It's clout. It's, it's getting ridiculous. And some people, it's like, you have to believe it's going to be a million dollars or you're not a true Bitcoin. You have to believe it's going to be the world reserve cri- currency, not that cryptocurrency. You can't say the word Ethereum. You can't say the word Solana. You can't say the word NFT. It's it's the Bitcoin Inquisition. So this is not a, as extreme as a Bitcoin Inquisition. It's, it's another cult. And, and, and it is, again, it's just amazing. It's the first time in the history of mankind we've had cults around money. I think it's fascinating. There's so much psychology involved in the price and um, not, and I think sometimes when there's psychology involved in the price, it, it, it can become just really based on very little. It could be, be somewhat irrational uh, because I, I think psychologically 
people are going to just get it in their head, it's going to be $100,000. And because of that, it is going to be $100,000. But I'm not comfortable because I'm following the pattern still. I don't believe Bitcoin can reach its previous all-time high of $69,000 until after the happy. I mean, and if it follows the pattern, it'll be about, you know, five, six months after the halving. Now, again, the new factor, the new factor, and again, new things happen. Things happen. The life changes. This thing that Whitney Webb tries to vilify, the ETFs, <laughs> the elite, the elite, all scared, do them, do them, do them, Elon Musk, Elon Musk is killing us all. Blah, 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 blah. Everything that's good is bad. What a nihilist, what a sick, disgusting nihilist she is. And she makes money off you losers. Who think value their wives, wealth, wealth in women. What, what do you send her for Valentine's Day, you losers that watch her show? Totally watch her. Oh, she's such a great journalist. Such a great. Do you actually go check on the stuff that she said in the past? How wrong it is? Some of this not, you know, World Economic Forum. This guy's a member of it. This guy, everyone that's slightly connected to the world is a villain. It's a villain. Horrible person. Gonna end, the, end society as a whole. Don't trust Bitcoin. They're trying to take over Bitcoin. Does she understand you can't take over Bitcoin? You can't take it over. How many Bitcoin does she own? None. None, probably. None. She's a loser. It's better to believe in million dollar Bitcoin by the end of the year than believe in that nonsense of that woman that the whole world's going to end and you should be a tree and, and run to some third world country that is better in some third world country than it is in the best country in the history of mankind, which is the United States of America. And you might hate America, you haters out there, but this is the best country right now. It is. No doubt about it. We can still, there's 50 different states. Some states are a little bit more crazier than others, okay? But you, you don't have to be a tree here. You can move to Utah. It's safe. It's fun. It's great. You can become wealthy as anything here, okay? And yeah, there is government overreach. There are problems. There are problems, okay? And we should, we should you know, watch what the government's doing. We should, we, we should think about what they're doing. But some of these other places are totally ridiculous what they did during the virus. It's totally insane what they did in Australia. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just so disappointing. Singapore. I mean, and these are financially financially free co- countries, but then what happens when there's a little disease, they all lock you up and become authoritarian monsters. So, I, I, but no, no, she, she feels it's, you know, it's, 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 the, the, the hate, what, what the United States stands for, the idea that it stands for is freedom, is freedom to do whatever, freedom to do what you want, not get in anybody's way. And, then, and, and there are some people that are trying to change that, to alter that, but still that basic concept is not, it's, there's just some people that don't even have that in their culture, okay? So no, this is um, this is the play. No, again, we, there are monsters here. I mean, yeah, you're free to be a monster here. You could be Elizabeth Warren here. Fine, fine. She, she, but she doesn't end up in the gulag. Okay, <laughs> this is a and you know, speaking of uh, you know, countries that people hype up, and you know that, that B.J. Benjamin is here. I'm going to talk about it now. El Salvador, the situation has gotten worse. I mean. It, 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 the punishment, it is political prisoners and stuff going on there. What they did to that guy, bashed his freaking brains in. Now he's dead. All right, he's dead. It was a disgusting picture on Twitter. I couldn't even retweet it. It was horrible. But people are like, oh, it's so great to move to El Salvador. It's whims. It's, it, it could all change in a whim. It, it could be a coup at any moment. In, in, in order to, I mean, you want to live in a, in a country, and again, it's become safer there. You want to live in a country where you have safety, not because of the culture is, uh, you know, all about freedom. No, it, it's about like, you follow the state. You go by what the leader says. You're cool. You're cool. You whatever he says, you're that's it. You're good. And okay, so you gotta you gotta mind what you say about the state. You can't in our country. You can make video after video video about how bad this country is, and there's no, there's no, it's legal to do that, and it should be legal to do that forever and ever. You've got all these complainers out there. I love these guys are the best. They're the ones that, ooh, you can't say things about Israel that are bad. You can't say things about the United States that are bad. The mainstream media is, uh, it doesn't let me on any, you know, doesn't, I, 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 nobody knows about me. Norman Finkelstein, the biggest self-hating Jew, like in the history of mankind, he says that all the time. Yet I see him on all these videos, on all these people's channels. This is a gimmick of these losers. They say, if you you speak against Israel, that's it. You're canceled. Dude, they're on every single video out there. What these losers want is they want to be on NBC. They want to be on CBS. They still are in those old paradigms. The world is changing, dude. Who cares if you're not on CNN? And some of them do get on CNN. I mean, but it, who cares if you're not on NBC or ABC? No one watches those things. Okay, so your 70-year-old mother got to see you cry, scream about Israel on uh, ABC. Does that... 
what the heck? No one saw. No one saw you. I mean, it's it's it is just so funny that people are like, oh, the mainstream the mainstream media is is, is against us. This is that. Who cares about the mainstream media? Make your own darn channel. Uh, Norman Finkelstein couldn't do that for years and years. He could have made a YouTube channel. He would have been very popular. Very popular. He's on everything now. Uh, Glenn Greenwald crying about the the media, uh, the mainstream media. This at least he made his own darn thing, and now he you know he says it's all going down the tubes. But still, the, these guys who complain about the mainstream media, they still have this leg. And the people who complain about the legacy institutions, they still want – build your own institutions. Who cares about Harvard now? Who can They still want their kids to go to Harvard. They still want to appear on ABC and CBS. They, but there's a new generation coming out there, okay? There's a new be, – just be part of the new generation, right? Don't worry about what Harvard and ABC and CBS are – and I, I know why people are worried about those things because they still haven't – because 80-year-old women vote more than – Young people, they still influence the, the politics and um, the, the, on the federal level. They still have great influence over the politics. And some people live vicariously through politicians. So they – and if they're told by their politicians to blindly hate these uh, institutions too, they'll do it also. They'll do it, they'll do it also. So, um, yeah, there was someone that made a video about like uh, why do so many conservatives um, like Russia – well, sadly, one of the reasons is is because uh, Tucker Carlson tells them to basically, and so some people just go to authority. Now, Tucker, I'm not I'm not painting him as like a Russian asset or anything like that. Um, <laughs> but his his vision of America is a little, you know, he's saying it. It's so great to be on the clean streets of Moscow, and and so he praises their government for that. No, dude. You can't speak against the leader there. We have freedom of speech here, okay? They don't. It's a little different over there, and that, it's really, yeah, it's really cool to have clean streets where you can't, where you can't say when you see a dirty street, oh, this is Putin's fault. You can't, you can't say it. like here. You can actually say what the problem is. That in Chicago, in uh, in, the Baltimore, in Baltimore, the, the, the people that they're completely inefficient people are being elected by horrible cultures, by horrible subcultures in America. Who just want free stuff? They are electing terrible people who maintain nothing, who don't care, who know they can just play all sorts of woke politics to get reelected over and over again. And I could say that, and I'm not going to get thrown in jail. And that's the beauty of America. But but again, so, but you don't have to stick around those areas. There's a Tucker wants a, a managed economy where the government sees small towns going down the drains with a lot of drug addicts in them, uh, bringing back industry, pink, picking industries. And, and so people can stay in their home, in their towns. That's not your right as an American to be able to stay in your town forever and ever. Things can happen. Things can change. You you have the right to live your life any way you want to. So you can make the most of the drug addict uh, situation around you, or you can just leave and go to a, a new, better place and where the cost of living is a little different. Maybe it's more. Maybe it's less. Whatever it may be. Um, but you know, I there were people kind of say they, they say. They try to say, when, what? I say, this is the best time to be alive. And they're like, better than when? I'm like, better than 1994, for God's sakes. What you, that was 30 years ago, 1994. There was no internet. There was no real internet then. There was no, you have to use a fax machine and, and, and your home phone. I mean, this is nonsense. Or, or I sent a memo, and I've heard people sent memos in, in I mean, typewriters and the, 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 the insanity that there were three, four channels or something like that. <laughs> it, it, the information wasn't out. I mean, it just un- un- unbelievable. They did, they, oh, our, our, our iPhones are, are more powerful than anything that a, a, a multimillionaire had then. They had no tools like that. The richest of the rich in 1994 did not have anything comparable to an iPhone. They, they, they could not get that information that you can get in one second. Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a now, I, I mean, some people get caught up in this culture stuff. There's a lot of different things out there that are prominent, that are thrown in your face. Raise your kids. Don't send your kids to public school. Do not send your kids to public. The public schools have really gone down the toilet in most places since then. Yes, that's true. Specific, you know, specific cultures have gone totally down the toilet since then. Yeah. There's a, there's a, but, but overall, your standard of living, dude, people don't even need to work five days a week anymore. They don't have to go into work anymore. They just work from their houses in their pajamas. 
You can create a whole business and you never step into an office. And, and again, real estate, commercial real estate is going to crash. I mean, uh, I tweeted about this too. The commercial real estate, and Leah, yeah, this is my final point of the show because this went a little long. I think you guys get my point about, you know, don't, don't go too FOMO crazy. Don't, uh, just don't get caught up in the million dollar cult, okay? Think, just think rationally and think, you know, how you, if you believe it's really going to be a million dollars by the end of this year, if you really believe that, dude, you should buy one Bitcoin right now because you'll be a millionaire. So do you re- think about it when you get all excited about it? Think about it. Do I really believe this? Because if I really believe this, I should just sell my car, sell my house. I need to get a Bitcoin, right? You don't really believe it. You're just buying it. You're just like feel comfortable with you're in some cult or something like that. If you, again, so think, think, use your heads with these numbers. When you, when you say, just don't do the, I know numbers are exciting. I know they're very exciting, but think what they mean in terms of market capitalization, especially with the altcoins and the unit bias. When, you know, if a ripple is worth a certain amount, it, it'll be, again, quite a, quad, a, quad, a quadrillion dollars worth more than the whole planet Earth. Uh, which is ridiculous. But yeah. Oh, crud. What was my final? Uh, t- oh, yeah, yeah. Commercial real estate. We're going to end with commercial real estate. There's still some pe- people are like, oh, yeah, the commercial real estate. I don't know if it's a good buy. <laughs> How can you say it's ever going to be really a good buy again when people only need to work four days a week? now? When people for a lot, depending on what state you were in, it didn't have, there are a lot of government workers that still haven't gone back to the office. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Good, they should destroy all those government buildings. We shouldn't be heating them in air. They don't do, all government work is, is just welfare. All that is is welfare. So uh, we don't need to build buildings for welfare recipients. We don't need to build nice office buildings for that. That's good. That's good. I, I mean, I wish there weren't any government workers, but if they're going to be government workers. Good, good, good. Let them stay home. We don't, taxpayers don't need to fund this nonsense anymore. But uh, with, with so again with commercial real estate, government doesn't have to rent from from some of these private uh, buildings anymore. But sometimes they would rent private space. But but uh, private corporations have become more lean. They let people work from home. They use the internet. They use the metaverse that some people think is a joke, but isn't a joke. Um, but it's real. And uh, so commercial real estate is bad. And anything and there are a lot of pension funds out there that own commercial real estate. There's a lot of different. Funds, traditional funds for all your tra- diversification for the sake of diversification. You better buy your different funds, this fund, that fund, the other. Well, they they all got their hands in commercial real estate, dude. And you, so what's going to happen to commercial real estate? Now, now, Bitcoin isn't involved with commercial real estate. But no, no, no. That, that's the one asset I can think of off the top of my head. No, no, no. Bitcoin's not intertwined with commercial real estate at all. Now, there are some people that own both. And we saw in 2020 when one thing starts going down. And you need cash. You sell the they, they sold the Bitcoin too. They they well also people were panicking because they thought it was the end of the world. But some people were being liquidated here, there, and everywhere. So they sold their Bitcoin to get their cash because they owed people cash, and that, that was that. But this time around with commercial real estate, I mean we got two options here basically. The government will just bail all of them out, which is probably going to happen, <laughs> and it'd be a great time to introduce the uh, central bank digital currency at that point. Just, you know, bail them out with a central bank digital currency. again. You know, it, 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 it's a threat to national security that all uh, the commercial real estate is worthless now. I mean, we, there are certain areas. But, but another thing they, that would be great if localities should take a whole, you know, instead of relying on the federal government for everything, localities should say, you know, we have high housing prices. No more restrictions on commercial Real estate. You can live in this commercial real estate now. If you can figure out a way to live in this thing, go live in it. If you own this, you can rent this to some hipsters, okay? Just just do it. And that, that will solve part of the problem. Like rezone or get rid of zoning. Just get rid of zoning. Rezone the commercial real estate to anything else but commercial real estate. I mean, we're talking about some of these old malls. Are, are What's ever going to happen to them? That they're waiting around. That the owners are waiting around. Oh, please, Yuppie Condo, come around. Yuppie Condo, buy this for me. They're not all going to get bought up by Yuppie Condos, all right? Hipster Condos or whatever. Just that they're all sorts of people. When I, you know, I was in Bal- when I was in Baltimore. I mean, some of the the, the low level. I mean, some of those grungiest hipsters in the world. They would live in some of the nastiest warehouses, and they make them these art spaces. They'd be so alternative, dude. Well, let it, let it, let everybody do that, okay? Uh, so yeah. And the uh, again, the third option is just like 
the real, commercial real estate is really going to crash. The, the, the localities will panic. They won't change the zoning. Um, a lot of people will lose a lot of money. Pension funds will go down. There will be no bailout. Um, uh, Bitcoin will also go down because people will start selling Bitcoin. Temporarily, people will start. But then it will be what I call the uh, we, the digital flipping. People, a lot, many, many, many more people will understand. If this if the commercial real estate really crashes, and I, I, I think they'll bail it out somehow. Um, the, the government is what I mean by they. Um, uh, if commercial real estate, uh, if it, it really creates a problem for these pension funds and all this stuff, people will say it'll be a di- digital flipping. A lot of people will be like, I don't, I don't want these physical assets anymore. It's totally ridiculous. I, I just want digital stuff. I just want digital stuff. This craziness doesn't happen. Um, it's easier to maintain. There's no insurance. I don't get sued. I mean, uh, th- there's a lot of value in having digital assets. I know a lot of people laugh at the NFTs and the, and all the other stuff that's out there. Um, but dude, it, right, right now it's probably better owning an NFT than some of this uh, some of this commercial real estate. I will tell you this. I'll, I'll leave you. Uh, and Paul, thank you for the compliment. Thank you for everybody who supports the show. Um, but uh, you know, there, there was some commercial. I think it was on the Ben Shapiro show. One of these you know, that, that still promote gold. Maybe it was uh, what's it? The, the guy in Austin show. The, the, the guy from Russia. Not not what's his fate. Not not Lex. Uh, the, Michael Malice. He's got a gold commercial too. And they're like, gold just hit $2,000 again. You know what the funny thing is? For all, all the Ethereum haters out there that still like, are like, you know, love Bitcoin and gold. Dude, and I've said this since 2018 when I was in, or 2019 when I was in Australia. When I was at Adelaide, Australia, I made a video about this. It was called, I would rather own Ethereum than gold. Oh, I would much rather, I can't. <laughs> Ethereum is way is twenty seven hundred right. I mean, uh, Ethereum one Ethereum is worth more than one ounce of gold. All right, and it started out as like a dollar ten years ago. And Ethereum is better than gold. Ethereum is better than gold. I'll say it ten freaking times if I need to, because you could do things. You could build things on Ethereum. You could trade it for Bitcoin like that at at, at, at its very base level. Okay, um, and it's digital. You can, it's easy to take anywhere with you. You don't have to buy a freaking vault for it. And all this, this craziness, how gold is so archaic. Um, but I, I, I'm combining two things that you're not supposed to talk about, that certain people say you're not supposed to talk about. Again, loud people say that you're not supposed to talk about. Talk about these things, people. Don't be afraid to go against what you think, what you hear is supposedly uh, the norm. Because it, it is the, uh, it's the most vocal people that shut up uh, the people that, you know, kind of believe in the sensible stuff that most people actually believe, but you become scared. The fanatics shut people up, okay? Be a true radical and speak your mind and, and for what you believe, what you thought about, not what you blindly believe in because you want to live your life vicariously through people or you want to live through a cult and you want to have friends that say the exact same things as you. Think about it. Really think about it on a base level. Is Ethereum better than gold? Is Ethereum? Yes, it is. It is. But nobody says it. Nobody says it in, in, in the Bitcoin space. At least. But I, 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 the only video I've ever seen is like titled like something like that is for me. But I'm a unique beast. Be a unique beast, people. Pound that like button. That's it for today. I talked a little bit more. I'm going to have to add that to the title, the uh, commercial real estate, maybe. Or maybe that'll just be secret for the elite people who actually take the time to watch this whole uh, 30 nine minute show. Thank you, everybody. Who knows when we'll be back again. You send me a hundred bucks. We'll be back again real soon. And uh, no other question. Oh, wait, we got a question. Content hasn't changed since I first watched in 2016. This is a good thing. Yeah. It's not that the cut well, I've added new content. I mean, my base, my base core beliefs haven't changed. It's just like, it's a savings. It's a four year savings account. I mean, that's like a really basic thing that I've been preaching for a while. Okay, we got another comment here. Uh, as a subscriber to your channel since 2019, thank you for uh, teaching me to be offended by selling. Strong hands. And that's from uh, Q the Plain Sound. Well, thank you very much, man. Thank, thank you very much. And I'm glad you're here for this very random show at this very random time. It's 8.15 back in Baltimore. Oh, how could I forget to say this? Today was the first day of spring training. 
Oh, Hashem. Oh, Hashem. May this be the year, finally, that the World Series is brought back to the city of Baltimore. God bless the Baltimore Orioles this year. Please, please, please let this be the year. Please. And yeah, you could have one little addiction like that, okay? I didn't, didn't watch the NFL since 2016, so yeah, I, that was a good... But no, the Orioles, statistics, I love it. Um, and uh, yeah, they were the champions in 1983. The world, so may, may it happen again. May it happen this year. They have a really, really exciting, good team. And we won't... Uh, that's 40 minutes show there. That's it. Pound that like button. I'm out of here. Thanks, everyone.